This is truly one of the last expedition type hunts that there are left in the world. I mean, I used to think Africa as expeditions, but all that, there have been so many trips over there, there's not a, many that are left unturned, I guess you could say, that there aren't numerous people that go there year after year, but blue sheep in Pakistan, this is one of those very limited tags, and most of the tags go unused every year just because it is this. It's taken us three days to get here. We've still got another half a day. We won't get even to start hunting until six days into our expedition. And then all the food, the planning, everything that's had to come into this is just, amazing but it's this view it's these things like this that make it all worthwhile staring at a 14-hour drive-ish to get to Gilgit. You know, it'll be a long and brutal day, but it's gonna be some scenic country after about three to four hours when we start getting in the mountains. It's an amazing road. We spent the night in Pasu last night. We're at the hotel, actually just right in the nook here. We've got the spotting scope out. You can see some ibex way up on the mountain here. Um, this is one of the locations that we could come back to to hunt ibex if we don't see any good ones over where we're blue sheep hunting. But where they're at right now, I mean, it's a day to get up there at least. I mean, they're way up towards the top. But it's cool seeing them right from here. We definitely noticed the temperature change coming in. When we left Islamabad, it was probably 80 to 85. When we're here, it's 25 to 35 throughout the day, so definitely a little bit chillier. 8,200 feet, gonna head up to about 10 to 10 to 5, the next town where we start off for Blue Sheep at. This potato is not from Punjab or local. It's beautiful. It's cool. Yeah, very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> this is school was invented uh, by a German donor, you know, to build this school. How many kids? There are so many students. So many kids. 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 around the village of Shimshal real quick. 
also getting acclimated to the altitude. We'll be going up a couple thousand more feet tomorrow. I'm getting a feel for how cold it is also. It's just a tough existence here and 2,000 people in this village. And it's just tough for them to survive like this. Well, we're getting all packed up, ready to go. We've got a number of porters that are coming with us today. Where we're going up in the mountains, there's no water, um, no food, no tents, nothing like that. So we've got a handful of porters that are basically taking everything we need up there. It's not like a hunt up north for sheep in the U.S. to where there's fresh water and stuff like that you can get. Where we're going, it's all frozen over, so you can't get any of the water. Hardly any food, so packing everything with us. That, and normally when you go hunting up north in the U.S. for sheep, it's warmer. It's right now, it's about 15 degrees. When we get up there, it could be, could be below zero. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we have to pack that you just normally wouldn't have to. Um, guys, are just tough. We'll see how we do. I'm gonna carry my bag with my gun and hopefully I can make it the whole way. Good door. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yes. <laughs> Well, we just started to hit snow level. We've been going half day so far. Definitely kicking my butt. We're about halfway up the mountain and then we're gonna get over this pass. And then once we get through that pass, it's just, the guys explained it's rolling hills there and then camp there tonight. Tomorrow morning, we we'll continue on another four to six hours of hiking and we'll be in blue sheep territory by then. Well, we just got set up in our first base camp. It was a little bit more of a day than I was anticipating. So plan is spend the night here, get up early tomorrow morning, hike. Hopefully by the end of tomorrow, depending on the snow, we'll be in the blue sheep area. So it was a lot more brutal than I was anticipating, to put it that way. I've never had to hike having a rope tied around me because you may slip and fall off a big cliff, so that was the first. Well, we just reached our first camp for the day. In about two hours of hiking, doing some serious side hilling. The next couple hours will be pretty easy, and then there's actual uh, handmade bridge that we cross, and after that, it's a steep climb. This is where we were trying to get to last night. Just the snow slowed us down, and it slowed us down this morning, especially side hilling, and that snow was really tough. So we actually tied up, tied up on each other just in case one of us slipped. We had the rest of us there to pull us up. Hopefully by the end of today, we'll be in Blue Sheep area, and tomorrow morning we can start hunting. Just got into base camp day two. Took all day hiking again. The snow is really slowing us down. But the good news is, <clears throat> this base camp is actually used as um, our herders camp during the summer. So local shepherds will bring their sheep, goats all the way back in here and just stay here because of all the grass that's in here. So they're built huts here. So we're actually going to stay inside and there's a fire, a little kind of pit inside, which is going to be awesome because last night when we were in the tent, all of our stuff kind of got some frost on it, never got to thaw out. So the outside of the sleeping bag is still a little wet. So it's going to be awesome to dry our stuff off and our boots and everything. But this snow is definitely adding a challenge to this. We did see some sheep this morning when we got into the area first thing. Saw tracks everywhere. So hopefully the weather holds up the next couple of days and enough sign here. We'll sure to turn up a good one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we made a pretty good hike this morning, just under three miles. So if you think about it, campus is actually three miles down the chute right here. It's a little bit of side hill at the start, but not bad. Got here early. We know there are three separate groups of sheep on top of the hill. We're just going to wait for about a half an hour, get a little bit more light. 
light and then top over and start glassing. What they tend to do is they come down at night and, and feed. It's not quite as much snow and a little bit more grass down low. We're hoping to catch them down low before they get up in the rocks for the day. There are apparently a lot of snow leopards around here and wolves, so that's why they head up in the rocks during the day. Just gorgeous country. Can't wait to pop over this hill and hopefully there are a couple, a couple good sheep right within shooting distance. Well, we've been waiting for about four hours and the sheep are still way up on the mountain. So we're gonna have lunch and then slide down the ridge a little bit and get in a spot and hopefully they come down tonight. I did just get a message from Eric on my inreach that he shot one, so I can't wait to go back tonight and see that one. For us, just a waiting game still. All right, there he goes. You ready? Yes. Grant. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We get over here to where the sheep was hit and he rolled straight down this canyon. He's down about a 65 yard drop. So we brought a bunch of the guys from camp and we got a bunch of rope. We're gonna have to lower somebody in there, tie the sheep up and then lift the sheep. It's just crazy. I mean, this canyon's insane. So hopefully everything goes good down here. So what the guys are doing is they tied the rope to the rock to secure it. They're going down with two ropes. Right there he's tying around, they're gonna lower him down in there. And then he'll tie up the sheep, lift the sheep up, and then we'll bring him out. Down a steep canyon with ice on both sides, so there's no way to get in there besides roping.
Kamaş! Kamaş! He's gorgeous. Yes. Thank you guys, everybody. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness. Looks pretty good for taking a tumble. Well, this is kind of a good example of what sheep conservation does. It's not only bringing money to the community here, but the program is stopping poaching, which is increasing the number of blue sheep in this area. And it's all because of everybody around here that this is possible. So, so explain the process of what goes on now. Right. So, uh, this is the sheep which mm -hmm. you uh, uh, hunted today. Mm -hmm. So now the porters are uh, gather here. All the team. Yep. So uh, we have a system. Uh, when a hunter shoots sheep, mm -hmm. so all the people, the meat goes to everyone. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as well the money. Yep. It's also for community. Yep. And the sheep is also for equal for ev for each for everyone. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So I think it's very. Uh, oh yeah. Nice. That's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. And that's what. So thank you so much. No, oh, thank you guys. And thank as everybody. Well for, uh, uh, Mr. Eric, mm -hmm. two days before, as well, uh, the uh, people's distributed. All the meat was the distributed. Meat. Yeah. yeah. No, that's so perfect. Thank so no. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So, on behalf of Shikjal community, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, the honorable guests, mm -hmm. Mr. Mark and his uh, companions. It's a great pleasure that uh, in this uh, remote part of the world, we have uh, a very kind friends from the United States. Mm -hmm. And thanks for the blue sheep that uh, they are attracting people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that caused the social attraction as well yeah. with the rest of the world. So thank you very much uh, for coming here. And I would also like to congratulate uh, both of you for the successful hunt. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, just like a hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, it is like an expedition. So you very successfully and very smartly did it. Mm -hmm. So we are very thankful to you for coming here and uh, uh, the main thing is that because uh, we uh, a lot of people are visiting here, but uh, people like you from United States and uh, working in a field uh, which is uh, which will be a source for all of us mm -hmm. to attack more people in the United States, mm -hmm. and that will benefit the community. Yeah. Um, you may know about Shimshal. Uh, we have about 700 uh, hundred years history here in Shimshal. Our forefathers are living here. Uh, it's a remote community, um, but a very brave community, I would say, mm -hmm. because in this remote <coughs> part, uh, we have believed that uh, with self-help, uh, we can achieve our goals. So this uh, conservation is one of the best examples. Mm 
mm -hmm. uh, because the community in past, you know, our forefathers used to hunt for their food, and now we are conserving it for uh, the education, mm -hmm. for our health, for our, our social economic development. Mm -hmm. So uh, once again, I am thankful to you that because if you will not come here, we will not get the benefit. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much to you, to your company, and I would also like to. Um, Thank Mr. Farhad and his team for bridging uh, the community and the, the hunters, and also the government wildlife department for cooperating with us, and, uh, and especially for this hunt. I would also like to uh, thank SMT and all the uh, your team members, the porters and, and the local hunters, uh, all the team members who are there with you. So I would uh, congratulate them and thank them for the cooperation. If uh, there is any mistake in the, during the tour mm -hmm. from the porters or from the Shamshali people, so on behalf of them I would apologize. Mm -hmm. and I hope you will not uh, keep it in well, your heart. There was nothing they didn't so, <laughs> Thank you very much yeah. uh, once again um, for coming here, for hunting here and um, for giving this opportunity for us. So thank you. Thank you. Over the, the last year, I spent over a month in Pakistan with Noor. And it's my goal that on both TV and with my hunters, um, to show the true Pakistan. The one that with the people that I've experienced, um, the kindness that everybody has shown um, from porters, cooks, everybody. This is my goal is to show the true Pakistan and to bring more hunters here to Shimshal. It's my goal. And I just wanted to say thank you from everybody, Noor, Shaw, porters, cooks, everybody. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I've, Eric said it, we've hunted all over the world. This has been the best experience of my life. And I, I've let my wife, my family know, everybody know that this is the once in a lifetime experience that I could have right yeah. here. Yes, and we'll we'll give it to Farhad to give to here. Farhad community visit dollar. And then we would also like to donate $3,000 for a hut in the last spot that we went for hunting. It's times like this that really speechless. Um, over the last year, I spent a month in Pakistan, and it's my goal to show what the true Pakistan is and not what is shown on news. Not once in my travel here have I felt unsafe or anything, and nothing but hospitality has been shown my way, and that's my goal um, through TV and through social media, is to show what the true Pakistan is like. <laughs>